Good morning, church. Great to be with you again this morning. Thank you for welcoming us into your lounge rooms and through your phones, your, your screens, your TVs, your computers. So wonderful to be with you, to encourage you in the word of the Lord again this morning. Obviously not gathering together um, in the flesh as we would like to, but remember there's no lockdown in the spirit. It might be locked down in the natural, but we are living under an open heaven. So I want to encourage you with a, a scripture this morning before we progress. This is out of Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to break in at verse 15. And it says this, So be very careful how you live, not being like those with no understanding, but live honourably with true wisdom, for we are living in evil times. Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purposes. What a great statement. Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purposes purposes. Remember, you can't lock down the purposes of the Lord. And don't live foolishly, for then you will have discernment to fully understand God's will. And don't get drunk with wine, which is rebellion. Instead, be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit is not locked down. And you can be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Not a little bit of the Holy Spirit. You can be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit right where you are. Be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit and your hearts will overflow with a joyful song to the Lord Jehovah. What I want us to get this morning is this next verse. Keep speaking to each other with words of scripture, singing the Psalms with praises and spontaneous songs given by the Spirit. Always give thanks to the Father God for every person he brings into your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And out of your reverence for Christ, be supportive of each other in love. Especially during this time where there are so many people who cannot interact, who are craving that social interaction, who may not have people at home or family at home, who might be at home by themselves. I want us to do something this morning, either now or, or after the service is finished. And it's where it says this, keep speaking to each other with words of scripture. And singing the psalms with praises and spontaneous songs given by the Spirit. Keep speaking to each other with words of Scripture. What I would encourage you to do this morning is think of someone you can encourage this morning with a Scripture, with a verse, with a psalm, with a promise to encourage each other in the purposes of God. Think of someone who may be needing an outreaching of love of God this morning. You are that person. You can be a connector point. The Holy Spirit can use you. The Holy Spirit can overflow you. So open your heart this morning to be open to the voice of the Holy Spirit that you can send a simple message, give a phone call, send a, a social media post to, encourage someone in the Lord this morning. Don't wait to receive a message. Be the one that encourages. Speak to each other in encouragement, in psalms, in spiritual songs. So that's my edification for you this morning. No matter where you are, jump on your phone and encourage someone with the word of the Lord. Remember, which is alive and active and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Give someone life today, this morning, in this moment. And enjoy the rest of your service and bless you in the name of Jesus.
Church, this is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will be glad in it. Um, I have to speak about the tithes and offerings today. It can be a touchy, touchy topic, but let's let's have fun today. We know that in this the world we're living in, people has have searching for joy. People are angry with life, but we have found the joy through hope. Um, because we know we serve a mighty God, we serve a loving God, the one that provides for us daily, the one that gives food to us, who puts a roof over our heads, the one that, that blesses us. We are just stewards of, of all the gifts that He gives to us. So as thankfulness and as, as a gratitude, we are giving back to Him tithes and offerings. We just, it, it belongs to Him. It all belongs to the Almighty God. So we're just giving. So uh, I tell you this, I can I promise you, you cannot outgive the Lord. You can't. And I, I promise you, start giving to the Lord. Do don't, don't hold back. Because that, that causes holes in the pockets. Give. Give. And I tell you, if you start giving and, and, and if, in a, if you if you fell short come to me and I will give to you you come to me because I know the Lord's promises he will never let you down if you give to him with a good heart like the word says there's a song that says give and it will come back to you good measure Press down, shaking together and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. So let us give with a joyful heart. Bless you, brothers and sisters.
Good morning, everybody. Here we are again on another great Sunday morning. Why? Because we're alive and we're well and Jesus is the Lord. He is the King of Kings. He is Lord over all the earth and over everything. Wow, isn't that an amazing thing? Just to think that you have a relationship with the creator of the universe. And even though I've got all this COVID stuff going on, God is greater than all of it. And he's given this opportunity to live at this time in history, to see the great outpouring and the great revelation of Jesus Christ coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I think, you know, we might be having box office seats for this. So anyway, today is not the day. We're here and we've got to get through this rubbish that's going on us around us. But I wanted to just go back to last week. You know, I... Um, Got pretty excited over the the, the word last week, and uh, it's the same thing again today. It's just amazing. But last week, just to short, briefly recap, remember we talked about Proverbs and the the whole area of um, guarding your heart and, and protecting it from evil and looking after your inner man. These very, very great principles determine what sort of life you're going to have. Now, this morning, uh, I just want to pick up on it and, and just look at something because I was getting ready to um, press into this a bit further and uh, I was just reading my notes and this is the introductory line to what I'd written last week, which I never even got into, but is what determines the quality of a tree? And, uh, and I just felt the Holy Spirit Just bang, hit me straight away. Talk about the tree. So um, this might just be line by line here a little, there a little to get through this sermon. But today, I just need to uh, pick up on what the Lord's saying here. But as an introductory, I said uh, last week as your, your preparation for this Sunday to go to 1 Peter chapters 1 and 2 and particularly chapter 2 and have a look at the amazing scriptures that we have before us because out of the abundance of your heart you see your mouth speaks and out of the abundance of your heart your life comes to you your life reflects what your heart is but just look at this now from peter here in first peter says this blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. We're not dealing with something that's dead. We're dealing with a living expectation of something great. That's what hope means. There's a fire in you that's burning because there's a living expectation of good coming from the Lord through you into life. Okay, now here it is, verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Remember Jesus said, gave instructions to pray that heaven would come onto the earth. Our first steps into that is to get born again. And the steps to get born again is a true repentant heart acknowledging that Jesus is God and that he is the Lord and that he died for our sins. That's the beginning of this phenomenal walk that we call the new life. Now in chapter, uh, chapter 2, 2 Peter um, chapter 1, we go to the first chapter. And we look at this. So I've just been reading out of 1 Peter chapter 1. Now I'm going to 2 Peter chapter 1. And I just think that these things, and you can go to Ephesians chapter 3 and read this. They're the big three, bang, bang, bang. You get those three under your belt, you've really got something. Grace and peace be multiplied. So it's not just a little bit here, a little bit there, but grace and peace be multiplied to you, to you. This is for you. I know it's for other people, but it's for you. To you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Here we go. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. God has given us all things that pertain to life 
and godliness, the natural and the spiritual, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and faith, or glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of, this is it, the divine nature, not the natural man, but the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust or strong desires. And they can manifest in a whole lot of different ways. But the, the thing is that God wants us to partake of the promises. This is so wonderful because basically what it's meaning is that we're not governed by what's happening on the earth. And that's what I was trying to get across to us last week, is that we're living in an incredibly tempestuous time. But if you turn off the television and if you don't um, read the papers, it's in a different world you can live in. But unfortunately, we have to. We have to obey the law. So we've got to rise up to a greater level of faith so that we can walk above and beyond all this stuff. We have to know about it, but we don't have to let it impact our lives. And the thing that impacts us is what we take into our heart. And that's the battle that we're in now. And that's why I wanted to sort of go down this vein uh, last week, but we just ran out of time. And, and then the Lord said, well, talk about trees. So what are, we, what are we doing here? It's one of the most amazing things that we look at something. So let's go over to Mark chapter 4. This is a, a colossal uh, chapter because it's, um, it really gets down to the basics of life. And that's what we're looking at here. Because remember, I'm wanting to talk a little bit about trees. And uh, let's just wander through these and you make sure that uh, you've got your bio and you're making notes because these are just... We're in shutdown, okay. We have time to sit down and think. Not about what's on the telly, but what's in your Bible. So here's an opportunity to take the time that was being forced upon us where you can't go out and work and do things. Why don't you work the Word? Sit down, calm yourself down, get a cuppa, and start to look at some of these things and spend good time there. But Mark chapter 4 really goes into the parable of the sower. But we'll, we'll just break into this here. Because remember what I said, what determines the quality of a tree? Okay, so last week we talked a, bit, a little bit about the heart. But how does a tree begin? It begins as a seed. And I was talking about the gum trees on our block. How in the drought period that we've just had, the only thing that was growing were gum trees. They would just jump out of the ground. It was amazing. Couldn't, nothing else would grow. Everything else was pretty well dead. But gum tree, because they're going into the soil, that's prepared for gum trees. And the seeds go there and they just grow like grass. It was amazing. And it still is. And they're still doing the same thing. You mow them down. They're just popping up all over the place. It's wonderful. But other things just don't grow. So the sower sows the word. The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown, etc. And we go through to the bottom. And then we see that there's a, a, a measure 30, 60, 100 fold that's been released here. The point is the sower sows. If we go back to the beginning, it talks about, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened he sowed some seed. The sower sowed seed. So oh, I'm just wanting you to get, there's a universal, the universal, there's a universe principle. This universe, it's all around the universe. Universal. Okay, the whole world operates around this. And it's so normal and happens all the time, we don't even pay attention to it. I know that if I prepare the soil and I put seed into it and water and there's sufficient warmth, that seed's going to grow. Why? That's the way it is. 
Okay? You've got to take that natural principle and lay hold of it. That's called meditating on the word so that you grab it and you wrestle with it. You renew what's in here. Now, getting back to this, here we are. There are multitudes of trees. Therefore, therefore there are multitudes of harvests. Now, what I want to say now is very, very important. Thoughts are the beginnings. Your words, as we've, known, we've talked about this before, your words are seeds that go out. And we're just going to open that up a little bit as we go. Your words go out of your mouth, out they go. All the time you're speaking. But it all starts before you speak as a thought. So you've got to renew the mind. That's what the key is. You've just got to understand the process. It's like going to Bunnings, looking for the seeds. What have you done? You've envisioned something and now you're going to work it out. You've envisioned in your mind and then you go to find the seeds. The seeds are in a box or in a bag or a sachet and then there's a photo and it speaks to you. And there are words and directions. They are words. And that combination of your imagination finding the seeds taking the seeds, putting action to it, planting them in soil that's been prepared, that's exactly the same as what goes on with our lives. But there's just a multitude of emotions and thoughts and all the stuff, competing people, all, all, all those things that are in our life. And we've got to grow up, and I'm not meaning that to infer that you're not growing up, but what I mean is we've got to grow We've got, to, we've got to do things that are going to empower us to be stronger and more determined in what we are doing. Thoughts are the beginning. Words are formed because we've thought. And then words are spoken. In the speaking of words, seeds are being sown into our world. And after time has transpired, we have a harvest. Now, God said this in his word. He said, as long as the world exists, there will be seed, time, and harvest. That's it in three words. It's actually two. Seed, time, and harvest. Seed, time, harvest. It's going to happen. One way or the other, it's going to happen. And you are in charge of your harvest. You are in charge of your seeds. That's why we've got to become conscious and really think about this. Now, one of the important issues that I'm finding that a lot of people don't understand is that you have to exert energy. Like I, was, I go out there and, and I go outside and I have to toil a little bit to get the soil ready to receive. I just don't go out there and pick up the seed and just throw it on the ground. I can do that, but the birds will come and get it. No, no doubt, they'll just come and get it. And so what I have to do, I have to prepare the soil to take the word in. And a tree comes out of a seed. But what we have to understand is the tree is a very interesting parable. Jesus uses this a lot. And talks about this whole thing of trees. And um, I want you to, 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 to sort of grasp this. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6 and have a look at something. What I'm wanting you to realise is that trees are remarkable. And some weeds are too. Uh, they have a big root system that goes into the soil and and, and that establishes the tree. And so this incredible event takes place of germination and there's little miracle starts to evolve and then it pops up and then this little thing just gets out of the soil and gets a bit of green going and then photosynthesis starts to operate and all of a sudden roots are going down and the, the living seed becomes a living plant and then it becomes a sapling and then it becomes a tree and in that process of time it's almost immovable okay 
And that's what we've got to understand. We have to get these thoughts, get them into our heart, get the roots of the seed deep into our heart or into our soil so that when the winds of adversity, contradiction, all the stuff that people throw at us, when this all starts to happen, our tree is strong and won't fall over. Now, out where we are, the ground's pretty bad, pretty barren sort of stuff, very dry. And so the gum trees don't root down with a big taproot. That doesn't go down, they just spread out and they grab hold of the soil. But when you get a very, very strong wind, a lot of them fall over. They just get blown over because the soil is very clay and it's not very conducive to uh, anything really. You have to add, add and add and bring in more soil. But what the Lord is talking about here, in good soil, the tap roots go down deep and become an anchor. And that's what you've got to understand. You can produce this in your life. So we go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, and we read this. You have got the opportunity today to worry about life or praise the Lord for the victory. I'm cutting straight to the chase. The whole thing about a tree is, it's come out of a seed. Here's a forest in your hand. Okay, it's an amazing supernatural book. You sow the seeds by understanding what the promises of God are. You enter into that realm of imagination, you fertilize the seed that you're planting into your heart by your imagination and what you're saying. Your, 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 your spirit man listens to everything and it takes it in. I'm not talking about Holy Spirit, I'm talking about you. Your spirit man is designed to just take in everything. We are amazing creations. But with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you can determine what goes in in seed form into your heart. You meditate on it and you pray and you give thanks to the Lord. You go through this system of relationship with the Lord and you're actually manufacturing something in the spirit realm. You take hold of the promises. These have been given to you. This is mine. And you see yourself in it. You see yourself as it. And you give thanks for the thing that is seen in the spirit, but is not here in the natural. But you will end up speaking that, and then you'll end up trying to find out a way to get it. And in that process, guidance comes from the Holy Spirit, calling in angelic help. All, all sorts of fantastic things happen. But you've got to understand the process. And you keep it a pure process. You don't bring in negative op op <laughs> opposing emotions. You take hold of what the scripture says. And in this, this scripture that we're reading here, six, Matthew 6.31, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink? Do not worry, saying. Worry, emotional, unseen realm, saying, Natural realm speaking into existence. So Jesus says here, and I'm just giving you a, a brief thing. Guard what you say. Don't let the media plant seed into your heart that then gets worry and fear coming into you. What you have to do is fill yourself with the promises of protection. Fill yourself, fill yourself with the promises of the Lord that his provision is here. Fill yourself that the comfort of the Holy Spirit is with you. That God is with you. He's not over there somewhere. He's right there with you now in your world. The Bible says, take no th thought, in the King James, the old original one. Take no th thought. Take no th How do you take a thought? You say it. You take it out of the spirit and then you've just planted it into your world by saying, if I could only get you to get understanding here. Jesus says, 
Take no thought saying. Well, therefore do not worry saying. Do not worry saying. Because saying takes these fears and that and you're planting them in your soil. And over time they will grow and they will manifest and it will come into your life. And often we're good and then we're bad. We're all over the place. And the whole thing, the enemy's out to knock us out, guys. I can tell you that right now. <coughs> just quickly to close on now. It's a little bit disjointed because I just haven't got the time to really delve into this in, in the degree that I want. But if we go to 13, Matthew chapter 13, and close on this amazing scripture. <coughs> So we look at verse 36. Wow, that's a big chapter, isn't it? Then Jesus said, Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. And Jesus answered and said to them, he who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. Now, this, is, this is for our time now. He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. This is, I believe, our time. We're coming into this now. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. So we're, we're going, this is all a great trip, all the stuff in Revelation. And he will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun. You see, that's our opportunity now, to shine forth. The enemy is plunging the world into darkness. But we are the sons and the daughters of light. And we've got to let our light shine. But it's the same principle. The enemy is using the same principles of God in reverse and just swamping and overwhelming people with fear. And they're speaking fear. The governments are acting in fear. The world is in fear. But we've got to stand strong in the power of our God and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And God has given us himself to push us through. But he's given us his word to feed ourselves with good seed. So that when we take thought and say, we're taking thought from the promises. What God has promised. See, what God has promised. He's promised it to you. He's promised it to me. It's a heavy word. It's a profound thing that you are. You're living a life led by the Spirit of God. But once you deviate off that path, then we become open for the enemy come in, the tares and the weeds to come in. They just come. And so we've got to be on our guard all the time and be aware. And the awareness comes from knowing what's good and acceptable to God and what's not. And this is just a little scratch, you know, just to show you, wow, we've really got something good here. So take time to meditate on these scriptures. The parable of the sower is so important. We're actually controlling our lives because we're sowing continually. So let's sow really good seed. Amen. Let's make up our minds to say, hang on, Lord, help me. Sensitize me, Lord, to what I'm saying. Let me hear with my own ears, the inner man, what I'm saying with my mouth so that I can be that overcomer you've created me to be. Now, not tomorrow, now, today. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Bless you. See you soon. Bye.